Okay, so how to do a time depth curve in um, Kingdom Suite. If you go here to your project tree, and I'm just going to double click on one of the boreholes I've entered, and so the, the borehole, the edit well data window comes up. You can see this icon at the top here says time depth charts. I click on it. And so here, what we're going to be doing is you're going to take the well name and you're going to be putting in um, here you can choose the type of time depth chart you're using. Local means it applies just for this borehole. So maybe if they did a velocity log at your borehole, you could use it as local. But my equation that I've used is very broad. It's for the whole Karoo Basin. So this is a shared velocity log, which I'm going to use for all the different boreholes. So you could click on shared, click on new, and you would actually enter in a, a heading here, give it a name, something that you'll remember. And then you actually want to be careful here. What depths are you typing in? So, so far we've been using measured depths. So these are literally, they've said the top of the borehole is zero and then gone down from that, the depths have increased. So um, most likely you're going to be using measured depths. This TVD and this TVD here, Total, I think it's called total vertical depth. This is relative here to elevation reference. So this is the depth relative to elevation. So as far as I understand, hmm, I get confused, <laughs> read up about this, because sub C, as far as I understand, is relative to sea level. Um, this is relative to your elevation. This is due to your, relative to your seismic datum. So what you picked at the beginning to be your data. So the safest thing to do is measure depth. And um, here you would actually um, enter in measure depth and you would me enter in the time values, the two-way travel times. So these are values from your spreadsheet. Um, and so you can either use values from your log or possibly the safest thing to do is to take this equation that you've determined here and to just do a generic um, calculation. So let's, for example, go here. Um, or is this the best place to go? Is a question. <laughs> Maybe don't go here. But you just want to calculate what the two-way travel time is at. Sorry, what the depth is at certain two-way travel times. And so let's go here. I'm going to put. I'm going to calculate at zero, zero point five. 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. So these are different, to, uh, the two-way travel times increasing with depth. And so this is two-way travel time. And over here is depth. So that um, this is what we're going to input into Kingdom. And we might want to do it the other way around. <laughs> um, so our equation here that we have just worked out Okay, this is to calculate depth. So you can actually copy your equation here. You just do Control C, go back to your calculations, and do Control V to paste it here. And so, just make uh, take out your variable here. So let's go times by open brackets because it is your travel time. Go here, close brackets. Sorry, that is not right. Oh, that's what the problem is. Okay, so we're taking Q is our, our time. And let's just put brackets here. And don't forget to also take out your X over here. So I'm really just calculating the depths at exact intervals. Um, okay, and so these values I would then copy into Kingdom Suite. I'm not sure if you can copy directly. Let's try. No, let's just maybe add in some layers. No. Okay, let's try last thing. We've got five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if that is enough. This is our two-way travel time. No. Okay. So best thing to do is to type it in here. We've got measure the depth. So this will take you the longest because you actually got to enter in values. 2254. And the important thing is not just to put shallow depths in because this is an exponential equation. So your depths are changing. Um, sorry, 
you yeah it's not a linear equation so you want to have a representation of shadow stuff as well as deeper stuff um so let's add on the end here you want to get down to a good depth six five three zero so this just takes time setting it up okay almost there okay and so let's click apply um so let's give it a name. I haven't given it a name. I'm going to call it test. Please don't call it test. Give it a good name. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see here I'm applying this to borehole um, SA1-66. I unfortunately have duplicate boreholes in mine. I'm not quite sure. This time depth chart has been changed. you want to apply these changes? Yes. OK. And so now what you can do is you can click on any of your boreholes. Click on it. Go to time depth. And you can actually go down... To the scroll down menu you can see there's nothing here if it's clicked on local if i click on shared then there's a these are previous ones i've tested out you could go to your test one and it shows the stuff you've calculated if you're worried about this being minus 41 click on measure depth um, and you have a problem oh the big problem here okay which we'll have to think about is that you put zero zero for borehole SA, which means they're taking the elevation of SA and calculating everything else relative to it. So this can also be a bit of a complication, a bit of a problem. Um, it might be better then to actually work with sub C, but you can play around with that. You actually need to have zero, zero. Um, but that's something that we can try to play around a bit with. But you have the general idea now of how to apply a shared velocity time depth velocity chart and um, with your different boreholes because then ultimately once you've done this and you click OK it should allow your boreholes to be displayed on the different sections.